We now turn our attention to the economy. The Rochester Institute of Technology hosted a day-long dialogue on consumer financial services this week. RIT professor Dr. Robert Manning is an internationally recognized authority on the subject. He's been traveling the country lately, providing testimony to the federal government and advising industry executives. He joins us now in studio. Welcome, Dr. Manning. Well, it's a pleasure to be with you, Julie. Now, you're one of those people who can document that you had a crystal ball. You saw this economic trouble uh, brewing a long time before it happened. For what I got from the conference, though, is it's far from over. What's your economic uh, or your crystal ball telling you now about where we are in the in the downturn and how long it's going to last? Well, you know, unfortunately, we're only at the cuffs now of really the job loss phase of this part of the recession. And at the same time, unlike an earlier recession, which was usually more of a business cycle-led recession, we also have the housing market situation. So until we reach the bottom of the housing market correction, we're certainly not going to get out of this recession. I think we probably have at least a year and a half till we get to the very bottom and an upswing in the housing market. Looks like at least two years for this recession. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that's sort of like phase two. Phase one was the initial hit of the subprime yeah. crisis. Phase two being the jobless crisis. Phase yeah. three involves global right. um, investment in, in, in America. Uh, yesterday we had a presentation looking at who owns American debt. And in fact, a half of all of the debt in the world is held um, basically because of American indebtedness. And when you realize that the U.S. at one point was responsible for almost two-thirds of external global equity, you realize how perilous the situation is here in the United States, especially with the contraction of the American economy. Certainly American uh, consumer indebtedness will begin to slow down and we'll see a rising savings rate, but that has nothing to do with the continuation of the federal deficit and the pain and pressure and higher taxes that brings to bear not only on the nation as a whole, but as we see the collapse of Wall Street and we haven't yet seen now the elimination of bonuses and how that's going to ripple through the New York State budget. Mm -hmm. And without those Wall Street budget, um, bonuses, those billion dollars that trickle through the state economy, we'll see those cutbacks hit here, even on such distant uh, issues as um, state aid for education. Mm -hmm. So while well, Rochester, Rochester has sort of been spared somewhat in the initial um, problems, th there's bad news ahead. Oh, absolutely. I mean, even though we haven't had the, the huge doubling of the typical housing prices in most metropolitan areas, we've seen a little bit of a slight decline, but it's the other aspects of the redistribution of state taxes that Rochester's gonna feel the pain in the spring. And we saw earlier in the program that so far, lawmakers had been even started yeah. making the, those cuts in the pain. Now, um, it was mentioned at the conference that a lot of people, you, you mentioned earlier that debt we'll start to get a handle on our personal debt. Is that happening yet, or are people thinking, well, this is, might be sort of a short-term thing, it's the holidays, I'll, I'm gonna put things on my credit card because I know I'll pay it off, um, it's not a lot of money. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say you, you don't think that's a good idea. Well, you know, what's really surprising right now is regardless of one's financial circumstances, uh, whether people with very high net wealth or people that are working on minimum wage, everybody right now is really concerned and cutting back and we're seeing tremendous substitution that's why walmart has had such good financial quarters the last two um, because more and more people are just looking for ways to cut back we're going to see more and more retailers such as circuit city that'll be going bankrupt after this um, holiday shopping season i don't think it's going to be an abysmal shopping season um, from the consumer side, there's going to be some great bargains. The question is, can you afford to save that much money after this holiday season? Mm -hmm. So you're not seeing a trend. You are seeing a trend where people are not using their credit cards right. as much then. So there. What about the old uh, saying? You know, if we want to get the economy going again, we should be out there shopping and spending our money. Yeah. You know, one of the big issues is as we've gone from a transition from a manufacturing society to a service-based society, we've had some very strategic planning. I think one of the biggest mistakes the American economy has taken is the fact that we should have been investing in key industries such as, say, renewable energy. Uh, we've exported trillions of dollars that we could des desperately use to reinvest in the United States through the importation of, say, um, petroleum. 
and yet now we don't have a game plan. We don't have an industrial policy where we're going to say, here's where the next generation of good jobs are going to come from. This is where we should be putting in our scarce investment. Instead, what we're going to see is some very uh, short-term decisions that are going to have long-term implications, such as cutbacks in education. And really what Americans need to know is why are we making these sacrifices, and where is the light at the end of the tunnel, and where is our nation going to be headed as we face a more competitive global economic landscape. And that's the lack of information that is really reinforce the pessimism of most Americans today. They know economic times are going to get more difficult, but they have no understanding about why things are going to get better. There was a lot of discussion yesterday about the role of media, the, 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 the lack of informative, intelligent coverage in the media that's helping not only consumers mm -hmm. to understand, but our lawmakers to understand the problem. I've been quite astounded, uh, even with lawmakers, uh, federal lawmakers in Washington, D.C., about how much information they have on the crisis, where they get their information from, and how accurate it is. For example, in the discussions on the bailout bill, most members of Congress were completely unaware of the next final phase of the housing bubble, the five-year interest-only loans, uh, the jumbo loans, the six to eight a million dollar mortgages where people purchased these homes at the peak of the market and we're looking at 30 to 40 percent corrections on those mortgages and yet many lawmakers were completely unaware of the billions and billions of dollars more in housing write-offs over the next year or two not to mention the extraordinary amount of losses that will be occurring in hedge funds this spring and as we've already seen the pressure on so many investment banks and multi-billion dollar companies such as Secretary of Treasury Polson's Goldman Sachs which converted itself to a bank bank holding company simply so it could get a four billion dollar bailout from the federal government. Mm -hmm. So what's behind? Is it a, a, the, the state of the media, mm -hmm. the complication of the issue? What's behind the lack of good information mm -hmm. out there, would you say? Well, you know, one of the problems is we've gone up literally from cheerleading the economy and everything is great to how bad things are and it's abysmal. I'll give you an example. We were trying to do several major primetime investigative news programs uh, two years ago and they ended up being stories about how people made very bad decisions on personal um, purchasing and they ended up very heavily in debt with credit cards and it ended up basically looking at how foolish people were in spending their money rather than looking what was happening with the subprime loans, how they were being packaged and being resold, and how this degree of liability was exposing our major financial institutions to potential insolvency. That was the real multi-trillion dollar story that the media yeah, completely touched. avoided. So in many cases, with um, so many mergers happening, we know there's been strong pressure in terms of editorial boards that did not want these criticisms because mm -hmm. those um, media were owned by I some of these other corporations. Magic. On the other hand, though, we have many journalists who just aren't that familiar with these kinds the of issue. economic issues mm -hmm. and man. aren't comfortable doing them. Uh, we only have about 30 seconds left, but I want you to get your crystal ball back yeah. out. Five years from now, what's life going to be like in Rochester? Uh, I think we're going to come out of this better. I think a lot of people are going to re-examine their lifestyles. I think a lot of companies are going to go through a very difficult time and they're going to come out of it much better. And I'm hoping that our education systems are going to step up and really push people to get some higher levels of training for this new economy. Okay, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.